So the Bronx Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy for Migraine Trial um, is a trial that we conducted in the greater New York City area after a 30-day baseline run-in period with daily headache diary to make sure that patients met migraine criteria and had the frequency of headache we were looking for, which was between six and 29 days per month. Randomized people to either receive eight weekly individual sessions of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy for migraine or waitlist treatment as usual. Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy is typically given in a two-hour group session and was originally developed for depression relapse through various stakeholder conversations as well as really pouring through the existing treatment manuals both for depression and chronic pain. Uh, we made the decision for this study to adapt it to an individual format and to really increase the amount of migraine specific education that was involved in the treatment. Mindfulness is an attention regulation technique that involves awareness of the present moment in a non-judgmental, non-striving way. Um, it's a skill that um, through a variety of both basic science and more applied scientific research has demonstrated um, changes in how people think and process information, changes in how they respond to aversive conditions like pain, um, and improvements in general quality of life. That's what we hope to see in our patients. Uh, so patients were either randomized to receive my eight weeks of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy or eight weeks of weightless treatment as usual. We chose that in order to actually suppress the placebo effect. So if there was an effect there, we'd be able to find it. After the two-month treatment period, they had one month of follow-up monitoring where we evaluated both headache-related disability and headache days, and then we were able to look at the results. What we found is that people who received mindfulness-based cognitive therapy for migraine reported significantly larger reductions in headache-related disability, both in overall perceived disability as well as an attack-related disability than people who received weightless treatment as usual. But nobody in our whole study experienced a decrease in headache days or a decrease in headache pain intensity. And that has a couple important implications. The first is that we've often thought of headache days and headache disability as being intrinsically linked. And this study shows that for certain subpopulations of patients, they can still experience some level of headache activity, but they can reduce how much those um, headache days are impairing their life. They may still experience migraine attacks, but they're able to re-engage with work, with home life, with their family, uh, despite this chronic and often disabling condition. And the second thing is that mindfulness-based treatments uh, seem to have a robust effect on headache-related disability. This is uh, one of, this. This is the largest study to date looking at this kind of mindfulness-based intervention for people with migraine. But the results really mirror the results of both mindfulness-based stress reduction and previous mindfulness-based cognitive therapy studies. We see relatively large reductions in headache-related disability and almost nothing with headache days. So my recommendations to a clinician looking at this literature and trying to synthesize it and figure out what to do with pra in practice is that um, there are lots of behavior change strategies that we have plenty of evidence reduce headache days, both on their own and when combined with preventive medication. So relaxation strategies like deep breathing and progressive muscle relaxation, biofeedback, and cognitive behavioral strategies that focus on migraine-specific behaviors like stress or sleep. Um, seem to be able to produce both independent effects as well as when combined with medication, even larger effects on headache day reduction and reductions in headache-related disability. However, for patients who are already on an effective prevention but still seem to be experiencing high levels of headache-related disability, mindfulness-based strategies might be a really, really nice option for those patients. Um, we did do a subgroup analysis in this study and we found that uh, the largest treatment effects were observed in people with episodic migraine. Now, many people in our study uh, currently met criteria for episodic migraine, um, but may have been treated for chronic migraine in the past and, it have, and, and came to us successfully treated. Um, so, you know, really, I think what we were seeing with that large treatment effect, primarily in people with episodic migraine, is that um, these are people who have some kind of effective prevention on board, be it just lifestyle or a combination of lifestyle and preventive medication. And, but they were still experiencing relatively high levels of disability and wound up in a treatment trial. 
So they experienced large reductions in disability over the course of time. 